last week's leader episode was remastered with the Blind Squirrel engine. Hey guys, what's going on? Wow, what a respected and solid video game title. I'm more shocked I complimented Sonic 1. A lot of Sonic games are old, even older than you. Older than me? Older than, um, uh, older than Nicholas Cantu. And when a game console manufacturer just really hates the idea of game preservation, game companies have to take alternative routes to get their old games onto new game entertainment systems. Ports, remakes, and remasters, a very confusing trio. A port simply being just the game with absolutely no change. A remaster being an upscaled, enhanced version of the game's graphics-wise and possibly gameplay-wise. And a remake completely building the game from the ground up. A lot of Sonic games are beloved by the people that play them. Which the switch from cartridges in the mid to late 90s, if Sega wanted to slap Sonic onto their next console, they had a port it. Now, I'm, we're not talking about ports, but I will say Sonic Jam, Sonic Mega Collection, and Sonic Ultimate Genesis Collection, and Sonic Classic Collection, is that it? Okay, that's it. Are all genuinely really great versions of these games. The Ultimate Genesis Collection is a really solid, uh, really Sonic, what the f*** does that mean? A really solid compilation of some of the greats from the Genesis. The amount of side stuff and content Jam and Mega Collection make them way worthwhile. Wouldn't say they're the most definitive way to play these games now, but for the time, they most definitely were. Nah, bro, today we're talking about completely rebuilding these games from the ground up, or just remastering them, because Sega's never succeeded in doing that mostly doesn't succeed in doing. Now, like I said, Sega does a pretty damn good job porting these games for the most part. But even in the beginning, they could not remaster a fucking game. In 2001, Sega the Sonic teammates released their magnum opus, Sonic Adventure 2. Now, besides being the greatest video game of all time, it was a turning point. Many people didn't know if this was the end of Sonic. Sonic Team didn't even know. Maybe Sega should send off their big character with their big final console. Nah, here's the game again, but we butcher the lightning. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Not to confuse it with Sonic Battle, which is a 3D arena fighter. No, this is Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, motherfucker. It's just Adventure 2. The battle part comes from the completely revamped multiplayer mode in this version, other than some other tweaks. This is basically just SA2. Dude, this didn't even come out a year after the original. How the reviews dip so drastically? Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is what some might call an inferior remaster. This means that it's not as good as the original. Yeah, the Dreamcast version says it has better lighting and less glitches. Not too noticeable, but when you're looking at the lighting side by side... How? Also, um, the Dreamcast had this one thing where, uh, the audio could be mixed through the console, and no other, uh, console had that feature, and, uh, the audio mixing fucking sucks in this game. But do not fret, Sonic Adventure 2 was also released on 2012, Steam, up. Oh, I don't know how to read. This game was also released in 2012 on Steam to, bro, what the fuck are you guys doing? It's alright though, it's not the worst remaster they've ever made, and the Steam version is in 16x9, which is actually a godsend decision. Thank you, Sega, for the first good decision in their entire 60 years as a company. Oh my god! It's a perfectly passable way of playing the game. I like how it's in widescreen, and while the lighting isn't as good as the Dreamcast version, it ain't the worst thing you've ever seen. If Sonic Adventure 2 Steam was like taking a test to get a 68, not failing, but sure as hell not good. Could be worse though. And trust me, they've made worse. Sonic Adventure DX, or as Yankees call it, Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut. Well, they ain't wrong, the director did get cut. While Sonic Adventure is a highly praised 3D platformer that transitioned Sonic into the 2000s and into the third dimension, Sonic Adventure DX parodies that. Originally, DX was just a slightly worse version of Adventure. It did some cool stuff like gave the player the ability to skip cutscenes, updated models to higher poly, which is a very debatable change. Like, they don't really look good. Also, Eggman just never got updated. They just forgot about him. Mission mode was added, and the game ran at 60 FPS. Oh, and Metal Sonic. Don't forget about Metal Sonic. Oh my god, what would we do without Metal Sonic? But the negatives outweigh the positives. This game comes with a ton of bugs that are not present once in the original game. I always forget how good the Dreamcast versions of SA1 and SA2 look. Their lighting engines were way ahead of their time that the GameCube version just decides to throw out of the water- out, out, Get the f*** out of here, lighting engine. That was actually really good. Here's generic lighting engine. The textures were also replaced with more cartoony textures, which would, you know, say what you want about realistic Sonic, but did really anyone complain? about this. But the GameCube port is serviceable, it's not really any reason to play it over the Dreamcast version, but as a remaster gets downgraded, a remaster of a remaster somehow makes the game a fucking joke. The PC port released in 2003 after the GameCube version somehow downgrades Sonic Adventure even further, making the graphics worse, sound worse, a windowed mode that's actually broken, absolutely no key remapping, and some controllers actually just make the camera spin. Joy-Con Drift before Joy-Con Drift. But actually, the PC version does something right. It has the highest quality FMVs of any version of Sonic Adventure. This makes it a good port. But they somehow made it worse. 
Sonic Adventure DX for Xbox 360 and PS3, which was ported to PC in 2011 and reported, okay, Google didn't correct me on that, it's all good, on Steam in 2014. But actually, oh, April no. Fools, I misspoke. Sonic Adventure DX wasn't released on PS3 and Xbox. I was just fooling ya. It was simply Sonic Adventure. It was just SADX, but worse and got rid of the DX stuff. But don't worry, you can get DX's DLC. How nice, Sega. I can play worse versions of a good game's worst version as God intended. Fucking garbage. This is bad. Like, this is, this is pretty fucking bad. Glitches we've never seen in the GameCube in 2003 PC port. And even worse graphics. My God. The Steam version... It's passable. It's the base Sonic Adventure DX. Not good, but it, it, it's fucking SADX. But don't worry, they have mods that overhaul the game to make it more like the Dreamcast original, which is honestly the best way to play this game if you don't have a Dreamcast. It's not one to one with the Dreamcast version, but it's pretty damn close. And I suggest it to anyone who has the Steam version, which you probably do because it goes on sale for a stick and a gum and a paper clip. It's, it, it sucks, man. It's not because it's a bad port, but it, it, because it tarnished the reputation of one of the coolest and most influential 3D platformers of its time. A lot of the problems people pin on Adventure for having are problems the original game never even had. It soured people's opinions of this game. A game beloved back in 1999 is now just a joke. Jokes are supposed to be funny and I'm not laughing, I'm just sad. But let's dial things back. Sonic Genesis is fucking horrible. That's all I gotta say about it. It's the worst play to play Sonic 1. It came out on the same day as the series Sabotager, and I forgot to mention it's fucking horrible. Once again, Sega jokes are supposed to be funny. See, I'll show you. Actually, the joke I had about dirt might soil some moods. You really thought it was over, huh? You really thought that was the end of Sega just making the worst shit ever? Nah, bitch. We haven't even undered. Sonic Colors Ultimate, motherfucker. Ah, Sonic Colors, the 2010 Wii game that was praised as the best Sonic game and now gives anyone with a love for bad video games and a video camera a long sigh. I like Colors. It's not my favorite Sonic game, but sometimes it's just Sonic Colors time. Gotta burp. I was actually introduced to the DS version before and I really liked it. Picked up the Wii version in 2017 and enjoyed that one too. I almost bricked my Wii because I had mods installed and asked me to update the Wii when I put in the disc. So f*** you, Colors. I hate you. But Colors was stuck on the Wii. There was no other ports of the game other than the DS version. You could play it on Wii U, but... Um, and that was literally it. You could emulate it, but... Uh, Nintendo or Sega might not really care, care like, like that a little bit, but that was until 2021. 2021, the 30th anniversary for Sonic, and Sonic Colors was announced to have a remaster coming to modern consoles. To start Sonic's 30th celebration with, well, I was gonna say bang, but it's more of a visual bang. Sonic Colors Ultimate is actually the bottom of bottoms. It's not as bad as Sonic Genesis, I'll give it that. But the fact that I gotta clarify that it's at least not as bad as one bad remaster is really really sad. They did it. They somehow topped the Venture DX, but Big Sleater, they patched it! The game is better now! Is that really your defense? They let a game release like this, and they HAD to make you wait for a download. To make it somewhat better, they barely fucking fixed it! Colors Ultimate's only redeeming qualities aren't even that redeeming. The Jade Ghost Wisp is alright. I guess it's cool. We have new abilities. I'd like different more abilities like the Lost World Wisps, but... Not saying it's necessary, but it was one of my hopes when the game was first coming out. The Metal Sonic races are cool in concept, but I'm gonna be honest, I can't really talk about it because I was never given the prompt one single time during my gameplay. I, I, I'm so dead ass. I know I wasn't asked once. The customization options are cool in concept, but it falls flat akin to Force's avatar customization. Like, imagine being a Sonic fan and thinking, wow, how cool would it be if we could get the soap shoes in Sonic colors? Nah, fuck. You is some golden boots. And I'll give them the biggest yeah whatever for the music. Some of the tracks reek ass, but there's some that I quite enjoy. The remix for Reach of the Stars is fucking beautiful. Tropical Resorts remixes aren't the worst, but the piano just sounds like Otami got his cat to fucking step on the piano. And the Planet Wisp and Sweet Mountain remixes fucking suck. I should have mentioned that first. Also, the Rebo remix of Speak With Your Heart is fucking atrocious. The Symphony covers was so fucking good what happened to that and yeah you can toggle the remixes on and off but at the beginning hope you like the remixes i just remember the fact that mario party superstars and colors ultimate came out around the same time and everyone compared that one single thing and it was really funny that 
fucking Mario Party surpassed colors fucking ultimate. The final good thing I'll say about this is that it's Sonic Colors. At its core, it's just Sonic Colors with some added junk. But even that couldn't save this trash bin. The graphics are horrible. Sonic's model is low poly and has a visible smirk that makes him look goofy as fucking hell. He shines. He fucking like. Dude, you could you could set an ant on fire with this fucking forehead. Why is Tropical Resort light and dark at the same time? And don't even get me started on the glitches. You heard the problems with this game. Mine weren't health risks, but I had a slow Sonic in the world map, the unloaded Sonic, you know the, the you know the non-game breaking uh glitches, but the annoying annoyances. Also, they fucked up the load times. Like fucked up the load times. Like fuck I'll give it a pass though. It gives me time to do other things I've been slacking on. This is bad. I mean, this was 40 whole dollars. I got it for 10. They couldn't get rid of this. It was so bad. I'd rather just make a video on this game to talk about every single thing I didn't even mention. Colors Ultimate is an actual garbage product that should have never even been released in the state it was in. It shouldn't even be still released. It is as bad as Sonic Co uh, Sonic- I almost said Sonic Co- it's, it's, been, it's almost as bad as Sonic 06. Actually, it's worse than Sonic 06. At least Sonic 06 makes me funny. It makes me laugh. It's funny. It's a funny fucking game. Sonic gets kissed by a human? Uh-oh! Sonic gives you a seizure? Eh, at least it's colors. But I need a goal that it won't beat so I don't even have to touch this. Uh, 950 likes, I'll make Sonic Colors Ultimate sucks. I'm gonna regret that. But even though there's some Burger Kings in the wild, some McDonald's and Wendy's pop up from time to time. In 2011, Christian Whitehead ported Sonic CD to iOS and consoles in full widescreen with a ton of bonus features. You can finally get rid of that sh to spin dash. Then two years later, the same thing happened with Sonic 1 and 2, replacing the old emulated versions of Sonic 1 and 2 on iOS with these brand new widescreen versions that make you cream. Plans for a Sonic 3 remake fell flat due to legal mumble jumbo with the King of Pop and Child at Heart Michael Jackson, but it was there. Sonic 1 and 2 are pretty good, but the thing was, they were stuck on iOS and Android. People clamored for the remasters to come to consoles. It was criminal that Ouya gamers could enjoy the wonders of widescreen Sonic 2, but not us Xbox gamers. Eventually, fans answered with Sonic 1 and 2 decompiled. So came forth Sonic 1 Forever and Sonic 2 Absolute. You just pop in the APKs for both entries and shabam, Sonic 1 and 2 at your fingertips. Sorry, keyboard. Sonic 3 Air was the Sonic 3 widescreen version of this. It was released before. And I could go on and on about how good these things are, but we still, we, we haven't talked about anything negative in a while, so let's just talk about that. Sonic Origins, finally! The official way to play Sonic 1, Sonic 2, and Sonic 3 in widescreen! Oh boy! What does this chart even mean? Sonic Origins is fine. It's not like a fine Latina, no, no. It's just fine. At the end of all the bullshit, I can just get it out there. This is okay. I'm not spending any of my money on this, but it's alright. It's serviceable. I can't really complain with it. It's four of Sonic's most iconic journeys with some added touch of the widescreen. Uh, and dude, this was the first official time we could play Sonic 3 in widescreen. Just make sure when you uh, play Carnival Night, you just take your headphones off. <laughs> How do you keep letting this man near a Sega Genesis sound chip? There's a lot of issues. My biggest issue is just the way they released this, and I refuse to even spend a dime on this. I'm not saying that I'm just biased because Ooga Booga, Sega bad. I'm saying this as just a consumer. The way they released this is just dumb. It's fine that it's 40 bucks. The base game is 40 whole dollars, whatever. $10 for each game, that's whatever. They have extra things. It's whatever. The problem is... To get the goodies, you have to spend extra money with the digital deluxe version. If you want to zoom into a fucking island, you better save up five more dollars. Oh, dude. Oh, man. I don't have five extra dollars. How am I gonna let get- How am I gonna get to listen to Mislabeled Door in the summer? It was dumb. And then they fucked up harder. Poor up. They must be in so much pain by getting fucked so much. Origins Plus. Okay. Cool. It added Amy. Cool. It added Knuckles to CD. Should have been in the original game, but cool. All the digital deluxe content was adding to Plus. Okay, what's the issue here? Sonic Origins Plus is $40. You're getting scammed if you bought the digital deluxe version. Whatever, Origins is fine. I'm not buying it, though. So where does this leave us at? 
Oh, Sega has announced there are plans to remaster and remake classic Sega games, which includes the Blue Bastard. A speculation hit as soon as this announcement was made. People were coming up with their own ideas and wishes for what Sonic games could get remastered or remade. The biggest ones were the adventure games Sonic Heroes and Sonic Unleash. Hear me out on my no. Look, it's not because these games are bad. Most of them are good, but Sega already attempted a remaster of SA1 and 2, and while SA2 was serviceable, SA1 remaster? Hey, you can't say that in 2023, what's wrong with you? SA1 and SA2 need a good team and good vision behind it if it's getting remastered. If these remasters are in the best hands, then maybe I'll be more optimistic, but after the last few times... Oh buddy. Sonic Heroes, honestly... I could care less if this comes out bad. My reaction to it is probably going to be the same as I was when I was playing the game. Sonic Unleashed? That doesn't need a remaster. That just needs a port. I don't want to see a remaster of this game after the horrors that was Colors Ultimate. Unleashed was ahead of its time in terms of graphics. It doesn't need a remaster at all. Just take the Series X and S version of the game and put it onto other consoles. That's all you need to do. The Switch is going to be tricky, but who the hell plays the Switch? Yeah, and who breathes? And that's it. Sonic Adventure 2 Battles, a serviceable remaster with some enhancements and a few misses. SADX was a mediocre remaster at its peak on GameCube, and every version somehow spits in the face of the original. Sonic Genesis is... something people could pay if they really wanted to. Sonic Colors Ultimate laughs at anyone who remotely liked colors, and Sonic Origins is serviced but also brought down by some shitty business tactics. In other words, never give this man a Genesis sound chip.